most unusual set of circumstances today, Roger Mudfossil University, just getting ready to set up to do part two of the Truth in Light series about light being a particle and being able to be accelerated and no neutrons. It's called the electron flood theory. Now, <laughs> my friend sends me this video about, I do, let me put it this way, I have gone rogue in research. <laughs> I can't help myself. I, every single thing that I have found is not working the way they say it is. So I have got to look at everything. So Carl, my friend, sends me this thing. We've been doing some medical stuff. And he's telling me high healing high thyroid and adrenal failure, so uh, fatigue. So I get this today. And I'm starting to look into it. I'm only into a minute or two into it. It's mental disorders, this depression. <laughs> anyway, listen to this. This is hysterical. Now, it, Go on, say it with me. Wow! That, it, it, the stuff you think you know, okay, uh, may not be true. All right, now, we're going to find out what he was saying just before the wow. Hey, it's Roger once again. This is part two about light and energy and so forth. And extremely interesting thing happened this morning. We're going to go into that in a second, but uh, we're going to go over each one of these. Why does light travel in a vacuum? Exactly why? To find light in space. What is it? All of these questions we're going to have to answer one at a time. I'm going to take them. And causality is a universal principle. And what do I mean by causality? What I mean by causality is that nothing happens without a cause. Now, the only exception to that that I can think of is the creation of the universe, which is, is God and so forth. And that I can't explain, and nobody can. And that is outside the realm of our intelligence, I believe. But almost everything else is in. And causality becomes the universal principle. If you don't do something, nothing happens as a result. There's nothing. Nothing happens as a result of nothing. It's just the way it is. If you don't do something, so every event had a cause. Now, what is the cause? And what is, and there's a lot of causes. Sometimes there's a ton of different causes for each thing. So anyway, the, 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 the whole idea of all of these questions and all of these answers will be based on the fact that there has to be a cause for an event. So, I say... How does light travel in a vacuum from the sun to the earth? Let's just start there. Exactly. Tell me how that happens, Mr. Scientist, Mr. Cosmos person. And they will say, well, there's uh, what they call a photon. I'll say, okay, can you explain what that photon is, sir? And he will say, oh, yeah, I can explain the photon. It's uh, a magnetic wave. And it travels through space unobstructed because there is nothing in space and this magnetic perturbation which is a frequency vibration wave ends up striking our atmosphere and creating light and heat I said okay good how does it get from the Sun to the earth and he said well I just told you that's a photon it travels through the the emptiness of space and I said how does it travel what's traveling he said, what's a photon? I said, well, what, what is it made out of? He said, it's made out of electromagnetism. I said, well, what is it electromagnetism made out of? He said, it's a wave. I said, a wave of what? What is a wave made out of? What is that wave made from? He said, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's particle wave duality. It's not really a wave. It's not really a particle. It's neither one of those things, but it's both of those things. But it's never one of those things at the same time. And, and, uh, and that's just what happened. And I said, well, how does it... I, I, just, I don't understand how sun, light, gets from the sun to earth. Please, just continue to tell me what the actual physical description of that sunlight is when it is between the sun and the earth. They have no idea. The tap's absolutely, totally lost. Absolutely in Never Never Land. And then they will become upset and violent. <laughs> and all it is is that they just never understood anything in the beginning. There is no neutrons. There is no perturbation in space. What is happening is the sun vibrates so violently 
that it throws away particles and the what particles is going to throw away the ones that are on the furthest out edges of everything which is always electrons electrons coat everything there is nothing that is not painted with electrons every atom is surrounded with electrons those are the ones that shake and heat and violate space and push other electrons forward to create electron flow which is electricity they create lightning there is static electricity they are the particles and those particles are thrown from the sun to the earth and they are particles in space exactly as they are on earth i've shown them in the light experiments now let's just take a look at my representation of what's happening in space and we're going to leave it at this for today how does it travel in space define the light in the space what is it what is it? Then I'm going to tell you about the sun's corona and all these other things and Venus and the atomic bomb, why it goes straight up off the ground, and, you know, all the di different barometric pre pressure changes four times a day, like clockwork. Boom, 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 boom. Why does that happen? What causes the auroras? What causes gravity? Why do gauge blocks, when you twist them together, why do they lock solid? Now, what causes magnetic mag magnetism and magnetic alignments and so on? We're going to go through every single one of these things. Sonoluminescence, um, bioluminescence, chemist chemical luminescence, the whole shoot and match of every single electronic interaction, and there is nothing that happens that is not an electronic interaction. Nothing happens that is not an electronic interaction. Nothing. All right? Now, I drew this little picture here just to uh, demonstrate what's happening. Now, I showed light spinning. It spins as a particle. I'll show it again. I'll show a couple quick shots again today. But you have to start from the beginning of part one and go all the way up. And you'll see all of these interactions. The sun is, is a, a violent shaking mass of heat and vibration and electronic motion. And it's so violent at the corona, and I'm going to explain why, because of the interaction with space, that the corona, it actually causes the, the electrons to become so magnetically vibrated that they spin off the sun, and they spin through space, and then when they hit our atmosphere, the spinning particle slams into the mass of proton type material which is coated with electrons and they bounce and that's when you get this light and they bounce at exact frequencies and I believe that's the rule of eight we're going to get into that and we probably already have but you're, you're going to see it again and you get these color radiations coming down through the because they're, they're interacting with molecules that observe the rule of eight and only a frequency that is allowed by that molecule will be emitted by that molecule. Very, very interesting stuff. Now, so I'm saying this, we're filled up here with particles. These are cascading through them unaffected because they're all negative particles basically in space because they're the little bits that are thrown out there. Primarily, there's some bigger particles, but not that many. Now, what happens at the moon? The moon, I believe, re-radiates. Now, people say the moon radiates its own energy. I don't know about that. I can't prove one way or the other. But I can tell you one thing. The moon will not create the same kind of light that the sun does. The sun is a radiating body that's flowing electrons off, cascading them away. The moon is a, is a reflective body, in my mind, where it is bouncing electrons back off. So it can only exhibit and exude electrons based on the matter that's here. It can't exceed what the matter that is here because it's not spitting them out themselves. They are just bouncing them back out from their rule of eight orbitals. These are being shot out like machine guns. So you get bigger ones, you get smaller ones, you get faster ones, you get slower ones. The sun does not spit out all the particles at the same speed. Light does not travel at the same speed. Light is primarily travels at a speed related to where it is impacting because this is magnetically positive we know that every electron is sucked into the earth every electron you put next to the earth will suck it in 
So all these are electrons, is my statement. These are electrons being thrown from the valent shells, the rule of eight, thrown out, and they smash into these molecules, which are the only complete molecules. Out here, they're all elect electrons. They're all like these. They're coming from light sources all over the universe this way, that way, and up and down, and over and here and here. But the primary amount of them is coming from here to here. Now, so this is the positive attractive source. These are the negatives. They're being pulled here. That is the speed of light. It's from here to here. Right? It's, not all, it's not from here to here. The speed of light that we're measuring is the speed that comes from here to here. And that is due to the fact that the Earth pulls light at a certain speed. All right. the, the electrons, what I'm saying, electrons are light. They coat the whole outside of our, our um, atmosphere with an ionosphere. Ions, ions, they're, they're negative particles. They say, oh, there's a lot of particle, positive particles out there. Maybe there is, but primarily there's negative particles. And if there's primarily negative particles, then those positive particles are quickly going to be consumed and, and flooded by electrons, the electron flood theory. Where it is positives, the negatives will flood them. That is my statement. All right, so this, it, it, before I said it was a very strange thing came up today, and, and I'm going to show you what somebody sent me today. relates to exactly seeing the light. What happens out here? All right, remember this part. Between Unless you remember. Come on, say it with me. Wow! wow. That, the stuff you think wow. you know, okay, uh, may not be true. So when we talk today about thyroid... Alright, so now he's going to go with the thyroid. But let's see what he was talking about when he started this whole thing. I think I can come out around here and we'll start. Now, he originally started this by saying he, when he was younger, he walked into this auditorium and, and there was this old guy came walking up and he had a box and he put it behind the counter and nobody knew who he was and, and they thought he was just a crazy guy and then he started screaming. Now, listen to this. Sure, this guy's crazy. And then he says it a third time, but this time he says it with such authority. He said, light is invisible right now. Raise your hand if you believe so. And of course, nobody raised their hand. Then what he did is he took erasers. Okay, this is going to be hard for you. Before whiteboards, they had chalk. <laughs> so he had two erasers, and he goes in front of the box, and he beats them. All of a sudden, you see this laser beam appear. And it, it was like, whoa, wait a second. He said, light is invisible. You only see its interactions with different particles. Like you see the light there, you see it here, but you don't see it in between. Go on, see it with me. Wow! All right, it's, it's, it's just so obvious. The light is always in between. There's nothing that just gets from somewhere to somewhere else with nothing causing it. I mean, it's ridiculous. So, <laughs> wow. That, it, it, the stuff you think you know, okay, uh, may not be true. Everything you think you know may not be true. You better re-examine every single thing you think you fully understand because I'm going to tell you right now, the things you think you fully understand were told to you that you should understand in this particular way. And most people say, I always was so confused. Well, that's because you're too smart to listen to these people. These are actual shots from a laser going through a Venturi. And this is what I base all of my research on. Alright, this is that red laser beam and it is now being accelerated so this I'm saying light can be accelerated. That is the particle beam and I'm saying light is a particle. These little white dots are the particle. They own a region around themselves and they are unseen and you never see them. So you say light is, is unseen. Well, it is unseen until it concusses with something. These particles here are being concussed by the explosive reverse magnetic radiation coming back here concussing all of the dots that are in the space here as you can see now that is the nature of those particles they will glow they are not glowing as white as these particles because they are not being concussed 
the severity of these particles. Now, so we have seen the light stretched means it is being pulled and accelerated. We have seen the light as a particle means it is a particle. We have seen free electrons floating in space being concussed. I claim that is at, uh, ether, and I claim that these particles, not only are they here and being concussed, but they can be in space, and they don't get concussed because there is nothing of big magnetic interactions around them to concuss them. If there was an explosion in space, well, then it's a different story. You would see that. But light passing through space, you don't see because it does not interact with other light particles. You need complete mass in space to create the collision of those particles to be seen. As they come out of the accelerator, they are in plasma. They are all crushed into each other's regions that they, they want to control, unseen but still in control of a region. Now they are all pressed against each other's regions and crushed into the zones they do not want to be. They begin to come back to their own regions. Now, this is what disturbs me, is why had they entered red, they turned all these other colors, they come back, and they all come back to red. It has something to do with the rule of eight, and I am not certain of what it is. But you can see all these interactions. Now let's see a little different shot. As they crush into the space, they create fields surrounding them. The charged particle is here coming out so fast that it doesn't interact until it slows down a smidge and then begins to expand and fluff into these fields that are the polarized magnetic particles in the air, the ether, those little concussed white particles surround that particle as it flows out of here. And it only happens for this just this right borderline space of about two cycles. Now, this is a white particle, and I believe that one is spinning backwards, gathering its field. Instead of splaying it outwards with the right-hand rule, it's got a left spin, and it's gathering its field into itself. And that could be considered antimatter, possibly. But I'm saying this is Cheryenkov radiation. That's a, Bose, a, Bose, uh, a boson particle, charged particle carrier. That is the Higgs field that surrounds the charged particle.